Welcome to Portsmouth Now. I'm your host, Rob Lauer. July is the month for flags, patriotic music, and fireworks. It's also the month for kayaking, outdoor concerts, day camps, movies on the lawn, farmers markets, visits to the park, and much more. Sit back for the next half hour and join us because we're going to take a look at all those things right here, right now on Portsmouth Now. Welcome to this July 2015 episode of Portsmouth Now. July starts off with a bang here in Portsmouth with a slew of special events guaranteed to make your July 4th a celebration you won't forget. The party begins on Friday evening, July 3rd at 5 p.m. on the corner of Court Street and High Street. There, the sound of music will rock the roll town with a free concert in the courtyard of the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center. Everyone is invited for the free music and for free refreshments, free drinks, and free admission to the museum itself. There are always plenty of chairs available, but if you want to bring your own lawn chair, feel free. Also beginning at 5 p.m., you can relive the early 1960s with a classic car cruise down High Street, with plenty of parking along the street for classic cars. Following the cruising, a gathering of classic cars will rendezvous at the Portside Park for a drive-in style movie. The movie will be the George Lucas classic American Graffiti, starring Ron Howard and Harrison Ford. Gates of the movie open at 8.45 p.m. The movie starts at 9.30 p.m. at the Portside Park right next to Tidewater Yacht and Crawford Parkway. So grab your blankets and lawn chairs and make it a classic Old Town summer night. On Saturday morning, July 4th, head over to the Old Town Antiques to Flea Market, conveniently located in the Middle Street Garage at the corner of Middle and London Streets. The market always goes on rain or shine. Gates open at 10 a.m. and close at 2 p.m. Admission and parking are always free. After visiting the market, walk just one block over to the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum and the Lightship Portsmouth, where they will be celebrating Independence Day all day long, 1940s style. Here to tell us more about the event is Naval Shipyard Museum curator, Diane Cripps. I'm the curator here at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum, and on July 4th this year we'll be having our Patriots Day event. It's an annual event here at the museum. Uh, this year we're trying something different. Instead of a colonial theme, which we've used for a number of years, we're going to go with a World War II theme and we're going to have a lot of activities. First of all, it is first Saturday here in Portsmouth and every time there's a first Saturday, both the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum and the Lightship Portsmouth have free admission for the day and we're having a lot of uh, outdoor activities related to our Patriots Day event. We're having a swing band come to play swing music all afternoon. It's the 504 Supreme Band and a dance group called Swing Virginia is coming to not only demonstrate some swing dancing but they'll give you a lesson if you're interested in joining in and we're having a wonderful reenactor named Jim Collier come. He brings a big tent full of artifacts. He brings a World War II era Jeep and he comes dressed as a Navy recruiter from World War II and he'll sit you down at his desk with his manual typewriter and sign you up for the Navy and send you off to basic training. And he's a wonderful guy and it's going to be a lot of fun and a busy day. So I hope you'll join us. At 1.30 on Saturday afternoon, July 4th, head back to the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center for a special presentation, The Right Way, The Life and Times of Frank Lloyd Wright. What could be more American than Frank Lloyd Wright, the man voted by the American Institute of Architects as the greatest American architect of all times? Using 300 photographic images, guest speaker Timothy Tota will carry audience members on a story of art, love, adultery, murder, and the Emperor of Japan, all to the tale of the tumultuous life and the fascinating work of Frank Lloyd Wright. Participants will enjoy 90 minutes of insightful architectural analysis and juicy scandals at the same time. This event is free and open to the public. For more information, please call 757-393-8543. That evening, you won't want to miss the July 4th concert with the Tidewater Concert Band. The band is comprised of 48 talented woodwind, brass, and percussion musicians from across Hampton Roads, representing various military, professional, college bands, and orchestras. The concert begins at 6.30 p.m. at Portside. And of course, what July 4th celebration would be complete without fireworks? As the Tidewater Concert Band's concert ends, fireworks will begin over the Elizabeth River between Old Town Portsmouth and downtown Norfolk. 
The fun continues throughout the 4th of July weekend with a free movie at 9.15 p.m. on Sunday evening, July 5th at Portsmouth City Park. The movie will be Spider-Man. Free Sunday night movies at Portsmouth City Park continue throughout the month of July. On Sunday evening, July 12th at 7 p.m., bring out the entire family to enjoy the film Annie. On Sunday evening, July 19th at 7 p.m., the feature film would be Big Hero 6. And on Sunday evening, July 26th, the feature film would be Plane, Fire, and Rescue. For more information on Sunday movies in the park, please call the Department of Parks and Recreations at 757-393-8481. When we return to Portsmouth now, we'll tell you about more events taking place in Portsmouth this July. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to our July 2015 episode of Portsmouth Now. Who doesn't like to get out in the fresh air and the sunshine at this time of year? Here in Portsmouth, you have plenty of options. There's Portsmouth City Park, overlooking the western branch of the Elizabeth River. There's Paradise Creek Nature Park at 1141 Victory Boulevard in Craddock. And there's Hoffler Creek Wildlife Preserve at 4510 Twin Pines Road in Churchland. Here to tell us more about the events taking place this July at Hoffler Creek is Helen Coons. Hi, my name is Helen Coons and I'm the Executive Director here at Hoffler Creek Wildlife Foundation. Um, we're standing out on Hoffler Creek, um, which is a beautiful place to spend some time in the summer. Um, one of the things you can do with Hoffler Creek is you can come out and kayak the creek that you see behind me. Um, our Prices are $15 an hour or $25 an hour, depending on if you are a member or non-member. Um, we do that, that's an hourly rental, and we do that from 10 until 2.30 every day that we're open, which is uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Um, other things we have coming up in July, we have our early bird walk, which happens on July 11th. You have to be here at 8 a.m. Um, the gate closes behind you after you come in and you take a nice quiet stroll through the preserve to see what kind of birds are hanging out in the early morning time. And then we have one of our biggest programs happening on July 18th. We have our summer blackberry tasting tour, which is led by local naturalist Vicki Schufer. Um, you can come out and Vicki collects blackberries throughout the preserve with you. And then you go and you make some homemade ice cream and you eat those blackberries on the ice cream. She's um, a forager and has written several books. And you there's always great things to learn from Vicki. So I hope you'll come out and see us at Hoffler Creek. What's more American than baseball? If you're a fan of baseball or any other sport, take some time out this July to visit the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame at 206 High Street in the heart of Old Town Portsmouth. And here's someone to tell you a little bit about the events taking place at the Hall of Fame this July. Hi everyone, my name is Elena Trapney. I'm the Education Coordinator here at the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. And I want you all to come check us out this summer. We have tons and tons of wonderful Virginia sports history that you can come and check out and also great interactive areas where you can play around in our gym or sports complex or test your um, reaction time. So come check us out. It'll be tons and tons of fun, lots of things going on this summer. Also, we have our family fun night on August 1st. It's going to be our sports theme night. So for even more sports fun, bring your family along at 6 to 9. Um, on August 1st. We are open this summer. We're from Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sunday, we're open 1 to 5. Summertime concerts have been a part of American life since the days of John Philip Sousa. This July, the Tidewater Winds will continue that proud tradition by bringing two concerts here to Portsmouth. The first concert will be on Thursday night, July 9th at 7.30 p.m. at the Admin Center at 2714 Frederick Boulevard. The second concert will be on Thursday night, July 30th at 7.30 p.m. at Willard Hall. 
Now, here are two gentlemen to tell you a little bit more about the Tidewater Winds and what they'll be offering at these two concerts. I'm Steve Ambrose. I am the president of the board of the Tidewater Winds Concert Band. Hi, my name's John Brewington, and I am the conductor and music director of the Tidewater Winds. In the beginning, I was playing on the band. I started as a clarinetist um, the, ver the first two seasons that the band performed. Um, I moved on to other things, family, children, uh, so forth, and then probably 11 or 12 years ago, I became involved again as a board member. And then I think seven years ago, I assumed the position of president, and it's been a roller coaster ever since. I had the privilege uh, of playing in this band 30 years ago. I actually was, uh, was one of the musicians. I played in the percussion section. Uh, I was uh, one of the founders of, uh, of this group as well as a founding musician uh, and loved playing with the group. It was a wonderful opportunity. I was just right out of grad school and was excited to play anything and anywhere and everything that I could, I, I could do and get my hands on. Well, our founder, uh, Sidney Berg, decided back in 1984 that our region needed a professional concert band. Mr. Berg was uh, a, a huge figure here in the Hampton Roads area, worked for Norfolk Public Schools, was a band director there at Maury High School. And he had always dreamed of putting together a concert band in the Sousa tradition. John Philip Sousa was a military musician. He actually played violin first. I mean, most people don't know that, don't think of that as it, as it being uh, and relating to the, the, a concert band, uh, but he was a very accomplished musician and obviously a very prolific writer uh, of great American marches. The Sousa tradition is that you bring the best of the best together and that you bring guest artists in and he would then travel from community to community, like what we do, uh, from uh, all over the United States. This was before the, the recorded records and before radio, really, uh, that, that his, uh, his, real, his band was the most popular thing in town. He featured great opera singers. He featured great musicians from within, in the band to play solos. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of his own music, transcriptions, that kind of thing. That's the Sousa tradition. That's what we do as well. Not that we are a Sousa band. We don't just play Sousa music. Of course we play some of that traditional music, but that's not the focus. The focus is the model that Sousa created more than 130 years ago. Mr. Berg, his vision for, for this was to bring the, the, the area's best musicians together during the summer and to be able to provide free concerts for the public. And in a model that's unlike any other here in Hampton Roads, instead of the people having to go to one location, uh, you know, be it the symphony or the opera or wherever, if I say those names, you think of a, of a location. With the winds, you don't think of a location because we play in every city that uh, uh, throughout Hampton Roads. We take the music to the community, and then they come right there in their backyard and. Uh, uh, and, and, and it can enjoy a concert. Through his hard work and his persistence, he raised the funds, he recruited the musicians, and then in the summer of 1985, we had our first rehearsal and our first concert at what was then Town Point Park in Norfolk. There weren't a whole lot of things culturally going on at that time. Uh, the winds were a real draw. It was a, it was a, big, uh, a big thing for, for us within that community. So 30 years later, we're going back to do our initial concert this season in the same location to celebrate our 30th anniversary. There are community bands that have propped up and cropped up all over the country uh, throughout uh, the United States. There are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. However, there are only a handful of bands that are in the same model and mode as the Tidewater Winds and that we actually pay our musicians it's a professional group, not a community group. Um, so we operate just a little bit differently under a little bit different principles and guidance. A concert band is an ensemble of all wind and percussion instruments, uh, no strings. An orchestra, on the other hand, is almost all strings with a small complement of winds, brass, and percussion. So the biggest difference is the predominance of strings with the orchestra and the absence of strings in the band. 
In a concert band, you have no strings, and you have larger woodwind, larger brass, larger percussion section to uh, act as your core set of musicians. So that, that's, those are the principal differences. Now we play some of the same literature. The orchestral literature that's, that's been written for just orchestra has been transcribed for band and vice versa. The, those composers that have written just some things specifically for concert band have been transcribed then over for the orchestra instrumentation. And really the, 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 some of the, the, the differences are color. The kinds of color that those different uh, groups will bring and the volume of sound. Obviously with, with a concert band, we can, we're going to be able to produce a little bit more volume of sound just because we have more woodwinds and brass and percussion than your typical orchestra would. Well, our first concert in Portsmouth is at the Edmund Center at St. Mark's Church, a lovely, a wonderful venue. We played there last year and was well received. The first program that we're going to be bringing to Portsmouth is on Thursday, July the 9th, and we, it, I've titled it Tempest Fugit, which in Latin means time flies. And it's really appropriate for us in that 30 years has gone by like that. It's just gone by in a blink of an eye. There's still some of the musicians that have been playing the entire time, the entire 30 years. Uh, and some that have come and gone, obviously, uh, with, with the time. But I'm, I'm doing some music from all three decades, from all three conductors. Uh, of, of, of the band to honor them, to honor the work that, that has been done and our audiences as well. So we're going to take a look back at the first decade with uh, Sidney Berg and play some of the literature that, that he had conducted. Uh, then from Alberto Romain Assertion, uh, we're going to look at some of the literature that he did and then some stuff that I've done over the last 10 years as well. And we'll bring that, uh, bring that together, have a good time playing some, playing some unique music, and I'm going to close the program uh, with a movie uh, theme that was popular 30 years ago, uh, this summer, uh, 30 years ago, Back to the Future. And, uh, and that, that kind of sums up that particular concert because we're taking a look what happened here over the last 30, but our next 30 is what we're looking forward to. Our second concert in Portsmouth will be at Willett Hall, at the Grand Willett Hall. Our last week that we're bringing here to Portsmouth on the 30th of July, it's a program titled Shall We Dance? Uh, music that moves us. And I'm taking a look at, uh, at literature that um, Classical composers have written about traditional folk music, about dance music. We're going to do Aaron Copland's Hoedown. Uh, we're going to do Suite of Old American Dances by Robert Russell Bennett. Um, anybody who played in a, in a concert band or grew up in, in that literature, they're going to recognize some of that literature. And those that haven't will be, in, will be enthralled with some of the literature that we're going to be doing because it's, it's really truly American, uh, American music. The second half we're going to take a lighter uh, look at uh, some different literature and play some popular things. We're going to play, uh, I'm going to play Van Morrison's Moon Dance. Uh, we're going to play um, uh, oh, Mac the Knife, we're going to play, you know, some of, the, some of the traditional dance tunes over the, over the years that span our 30-year our history and beyond, uh, including some contemporary literature as well, and featuring a, a, a local singer here, Anna Marie Smith Butts, will be coming to join us once again and, uh, and to sing with the winds. We're just thrilled to have her. Our concerts are family-based. That, that is to say that we provide all sorts of music for all ages. We plan on making an, an entertainment event for families. So I think families would, of all ages, would enjoy all of our programming. And remember, it's different each week, so that's four different concerts. Excellent programming. Our maestro does a super job with that. So you really need to come out and listen to all four weeks of the Tidewater Winds. We have four, four weeks of concerts, two here in Portsmouth. We'd love for uh, our, uh, our folks here in Portsmouth to get out and, and to come see us at any time. Please come visit our website at tidewaterwinds.org for a full um, update of all of our season, uh, of our complete season and where we're gonna be playing throughout the summer. 
and we hope to see you out there. Come say hi. Rob Thomas has been one of the modern music industry's most compelling and commercially successful artists for well over 15 years. Between Matchbox 20, his solo work, and his various collaborations with iconic artists like Santana, Mick Jagger, and Willie Nelson, his tally now stands at more than 80 million albums sold worldwide. On Wednesday night, July 29th at 8 p.m., Rob Thomas will be returning to Hampton Roads with a new concert at the Antelos Wildest Pavilion at 16 Crawford Circle, next to Portsmouth City Hall in Old Town. Tickets are currently on sale at the Pavilion box office and at all Ticketmaster locations. You can charge by phone at 800-745-3000 or purchase online at www.ticketmaster.com. The July Jazz Festival at Portside has become a much-anticipated annual summer event here in Portsmouth. This year, the Jazz Festival begins at 6.30 p.m. on Saturday evening, July 25th. Recently, I spoke with Margaret Thorne from the Portsmouth Department of Marketing, Entertainment, and Tourism to learn more about it. <laughs> Margaret, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So, uh, tell us, the Jazz Festival has been pretty popular in recent years, hasn't it? Well, this is the first time we've actually had a two-day Jazz Festival. It's kind of following the format of um, what Norfolk does. Mm -hmm. They have a weekend jazz festival. So this is a, be a first time for us. So what types of acts do you have lined up for um, this year? On Friday we have a um, local band, Raw Jazz, which is a jazz band, and we have a um, gospel violinist, Karen Briggs, who's a Portsmouth native. On Saturday we have Forte Jazz. We'll open up for Brian Simpson. Brian Simpson used to be the uh, musical director for Janet Jackson, and he's a wow. professional pianist. So, so the, the dates for, for the festival um, this July year? July 24th, 25th. Mm -hmm. If people wanted more information, do they, do they just, just call? call us. Mm -hmm. Do you have, what is the number? That's the... 393-5143, uh, or they could go to portsevents.com. All right. Thanks for joining us, Thank Margaret. You. Thank you. We'll look at more events taking place in Portsmouth this July, right after this message. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, he's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Welcome back to our July 2015 episode of Portsmouth Now. Summer is the perfect time of year for dog lovers to take long, leisurely walks in the mornings or evenings with their furry, four-footed family members. Now, if you're a dog lover with no dog or a cat lover with no cats, then why not drop into the Portsmouth Humane Society? Located just off Greenwood Drive at 4022 Seaboard Court, the Portsmouth Humane Society is home to dozens of dogs and cats just waiting for someone to adopt them. I'm joined by Aaron Jackson, who's the canine Behavior Manager here at the Portsmouth Humane Society. Thanks for joining us, Erin. Thanks for having me. And we have a little visitor here. Who is this? Uh, this is Enchilada. Enchilada. <laughs> yeah, she's one of our kittens that are available for adoption. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what the Portsmouth Humane Society does. So we are the only animal shelter here in the city of Portsmouth, mm -hmm. and we are an open admission shelter. So what that means is that if you find a stray on the road, if you call animal control and they pick up a stray or anything like that, they come to us. So they'll okay. come here and they'll be um, held here at this facility and given a chance for the owners to come find them. And if they don't, they're evaluated and they go up for adoption. Just dogs and cats? Or? Primarily dogs and cats. We do do some other small animals. Every now and then we get a bunny or a, <laughs> um, a bird or a ferret, um, sometimes some guinea pigs pigs, but those are a little more rare. Now, if someone is interested in, in adopting, what do they do? Do they come here and just walk through somewhere and see all the animals that are up for adoption? Um, yeah, if you're out? interested in coming, you just come to our facility here in Portsmouth, and um, what you can do is you can look uh, at any of our available cats and any of our available dogs. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do an interaction where one of our adoption counselors will actually talk with you, um, find out what you're looking for, so we can help you uh, find your perfect match, because that's what we want to do here. We really want to find 
you the perfect furry friend that can become your furry family member um, that you can love forever. Um, and so we always want to make sure that even if you come in looking for a young cat, we find the right young cat um, for your personality that's going to fit in your family. Uh, what, so you come in, you, mm -hmm. you found a cat or a dog that you want to take home. What's the next step in the process? Um, after that, you'll have actually uh, speak with, you fill out an application. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, one of our, it's a questionnaire um, where we'll just kind of go over a few more things with you, see, um, talk with you about pet care, stuff like that. And then one of our adoption counselors will actually um, go through an interview process with you. Um, and as long as everything checks out, uh, you can finalize the adoption and take the animal home that day. Um, one of the requirements is they do have to be spayed or neutered, mm -hmm. um, which is very important. And uh, that just means that they're not going to be able to have any more babies or anything like that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how about things like shots and that? Do, are, do the animals that are here, or have they had their shots? Yes, everybody's up to date on all their core vaccinations, and that includes uh, for dogs, it's going to be your rabies, um, distemper, and your bordetella, and mm. cats are going to get their rabies and their distemper as well. Um, and they also get a microchip. So if a you microchip. do a microchip, <laughs> so it goes right underneath the skin uh -huh. um, and all vets, all other shelters, animal control officers, they all have a special one that if your dog gets out and it's found, that's the first thing we check. So say your dog were to get lost and they come here, mm -hmm. we'll check for a microchip. The microchip is actually registered to you and that way we can call you and let you know that your dog's been that's lost. That's amazing. And, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> no idea. Wow. Yeah, so it's a great way to find your lost pet. I always recommend microchips to people and that's one of the reasons why we microchip our animals so that if we do adopt to you we can get them home because that's where we want all of these guys to go is into yeah. a loving home home now i understand that one weekend a month or one saturday a month uh the humane society goes over to the children's museum of virginia and yes. has an event there can you tell yes. me a little bit about that the third saturday of every month we go to the children's museum over in old town portsmouth um, and what we do there <laughs> is we just uh we play around, uh, we get to play with all the fun toys that they have there, but we bring our animals as well. We meet with the kids and the parents and we talk to them about humane education, how to care for a dog and a cat, how to interact properly with a dog and a cat. Um, and we talk to them about our available animals. They get to see our dogs also in a new light too. It's yeah. not here at the shelter, it's out in the open. Um, and it makes, you know, they get to see them in a whole new environment and good with kids and all that stuff. So it's a really cool experience. And so if you go to the Children's Museum of Virginia and there's a dog that you fall in love with, are these, these are the same dogs yes. that are up for adoption? Yes, they're all so. up for adoption. Um, so they could actually take that dog home that day as well. Wow. Um, yeah, so we want everybody to know, you know, exactly what to do and um, see how loving all of these guys are, like our yeah. cute little enchilada here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining no us problem. today and telling us all about this. And uh, head out to the Children's Museum of Virginia, which Saturday? Each month? It's the third Saturday of each month. Third Saturday of every month. And check out uh, the friends from the Portsmouth Humane Society. That's it for our show today. To find out more about the events featured on today's show or about any of the other dozens of special events held each month in Portsmouth, simply log on to www.portsvaevents.com. Then come to Portsmouth, where if you give us a day, we'll give you a vacation. I'm Rob Lauer. Join me next month for another episode of Portsmouth Now.